we do experiments in the lab. We don't do tests. In most of the work that we do, we don't know beforehand what the outcome will be. Firing! Firing! Half the world is interested in destroying things. The other half is interested in preventing things from being destroyed. We are doing an experiment from explosives or blast or you know, underwater implosions or crashes. So you're trying to fi figure out why things explode and try to prevent them in the future? Yes, why things explode, how much energy is released when they explode. If there's a neighboring structure, will that structure be strong enough to sustain this kind of an implosion? Our interest primarily is to, is to see if we can prevent from uh, things getting damaged or destroyed. And all these events that we are talking about, they happen in uh, microseconds. So you're talking about millionth of a second. There is need to know how structures respond under such severe conditions, more so now than, than it was before. For example, if there's a ballistic event, somebody shoots at a soldier and the soldier is wearing a vest, how will that vest react? from the Homeland Security point of view if there is an explosion. Pipelines is, is another example. Submarines, another example. We are doing some work for the Air Force right now that uh, deals with hypersonic flights. Suppose you have a Humvee and it goes over a buried mine. So those experiments are very complex, but we do conduct them. For, for simulating blast events, either you use a lot of explosives. Now, using explosives is dangerous, as we know. We simulate the explosion part by using an equipment called shock tube. So the shock tube, as the name suggests, it's a long tube. And the way we have built it, it's a modular design. So we have sections, three feet sections that we have attached through these flanges. So this pressure that is released from here is going to propagate in this direction. And by the time it reaches about this point here, it develops into a shock. And then the shock propagates all the way to the muzzle end and comes out at that end to impact the structure. And it travels very fast, you know, this whole pressure travels in these experiments with speeds of the order of three to five times the speed of sound. Wow. The structure that we are testing is positioned at here. So in this case, we have a composite plate that we are trying to study. It's the carbon composite. And this carbon composite we are studying, testing for Navy applications. So these materials have been subjected to, to underwater seawater for some time. The whole idea here is to see whether we can make targets that are strong enough. And each of these shock pulses that comes out is representative of a certain amount of explosive. Okay, so let's destroy it, yeah? Sure, let's try it. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we're about to try this experiment. Uh, I'm gonna turn on, turn the knob and we're gonna blow up this carbon fiber, hopefully. Turn the helium tank all the way up. Make sure that there's pressure in the line. Safety first. Firing! Firing! We successfully cut it in half. The post-mortem of the specimen tells us how this thing really fractured. Right. Whether this is a composite material, so did the fibers fracture, matrix fracture, how much is the extent of the fracture in the material. So we do that by taking photographs of the picture after the experiment is over. So you can see the extent of damage here. Yeah, because it the snapped in half, but it also separated like... It separated the way, and there's a, there's the a lot of fracture here, there's fracture here. So all this has to be taken into account in understanding the, the results. You know. Right, right. Do you think about the fact that the experiments you do here every day are life and death matters out in the field? Uh, that's what we, I mean, our interests, of course, you know, we are, we are engineers and scientists, so we are always we are interested in understanding the physics of the problem, why things happen, and how can we improve them. But deep down, you know, that is the intent that we can protect our soldiers and uh, protect people from uh, events that are, that are catastrophic. That certainly is, 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 is a big driving force and an incentive not only for me, but for my students. Do you get upset when you can't destroy it? <laughs> Actually, I love it, you know, for our kind of applications, if we can create materials and structures that can withstand and are not destroyed, then, then that, that is actually a success for us. You know, although the research is somewhat driven by these uh, catastrophic events, 
<laughs> but there, there are a lot of positive things that come out from this research also. So our emphasis is more, is more on learning those positive things. So if you're designing new structures, new materials, then uh, they will benefit everyone. <laughs>